Warning, the video you are about to watch is the sum of my own experience. I may do things differently, I may do things wrong, but I do what works for me. So sit back and enjoy the video. Hey guys, just before this video starts, um, I just need to make an apology. <laughs> I know it's not even started now, I'm already apologising. Um, there's, I had a bit of trouble with my computer when I was, when I was recording this. And uh, through parts of the video there's uh, quite a, a bit of um, graphical distortion. Um, I didn't realise it at the time when I was recording, but um, now I'm sat here editing it. And it's um, some of it's quite shocking, but um, to be honest with you, you know, it took me quite a while to kind of go through this and, and, and make this video, so I'm just going to kind of leave it as it is at the moment. Um, I might revise this again in the near future. Uh, but again, just wanted to say, um, you know, sorry about the, the degradation quality, and I hope that you enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Smudge here, and we're back again in the A10C for part 3 of this how-to series. Now, tonight we're going to be looking at using the weapons. Um, now, forgive me, because I'm bound to do a lot of things wrong tonight. Uh, these weapon systems are, are the most complex uh, parts of operating the A10C, and it, it's what it's all about, you know. Uh, it is a ground attack aircraft, and, and it's, its role is, is to drop weapons, or, or use weapons. So, like I said, that's what we're going to go into. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Now in parts 1 and 2 uh, I went through the startup and, and flying the aircraft and tonight we're, we're going to go a little bit more into the systems what they do, why they do. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, things like operating the targeting pod and, uh, and then look at dropping the weapons. Now the weapons that we're going to use tonight, so if we just zoom in here on the A10C now I've got a, a mixed loadout but they're all precision weapons of, of what I've got on here. Um, that uh, you know, probably the most complex weapons to use, uh, so that's why I want to go into them. Um, so what we have, uh, starting from the left-hand pile on there, we've got the AIM-9C, which is an air-to-air weapon. That grey tube, that's the lantern pod, which is the, the TV guidance system for the weapons. The, the white things there are Mavericks, uh, the TV um, guided Mavericks, uh, the TV Daylight to the white ones I believe. Um, the bombs underneath, the ones with the pointy bits on the front, they're laser guided bombs. The ones in the middle are GBUs, which are satellite guided bombs. Again we've got some more infrared guided pistols on this side. And we've got a rocket pod there, the LAU-131, which is uh, loaded with Mark V high explosive anti-tank rockets. And the last, paddle, last pod on the end there is the ECM pod. And then the other thing that we'll look at last possibly is that um, cannon, which is a 30mm 7 barreled um, multi uh, uh, <laughs> Gatling cannon. What the hell am I on about? Um, so, yeah, that's the A10C, and that's what we're going to be looking at tonight. Now, before I, I go any further, there is one thing I want to take a look at, and that is the controls. Now, the most complex thing uh, about this aircraft is, is its controls. Now, in here, as you can see, this is the, the controls for the A10C, and there are a lot of them. And I mean a lot of controls. But a lot of controls that you see here, you don't really need to worry about. A, a lot of the stuff that you see on the controls here, you can do by pressing keys in, in the cockpit and doing things like that. So the things that we're going to really kind of concentrate on, uh, you can all find under this, which is HOTAS. Now HOTAS stands for Hands On Throttle and Stick. And basically what that boils down to is that everything in this aircraft pretty much when it comes to, to operating the systems you can do without actually taking your hands off your joystick. Now if, if you're like me you're probably not that rich <laughs> so you may not have a, um, a, a top-end joystick. Now I'm fairly lucky that I actually have the, the Thrustmaster Warthog um, but um, well my, my my throttle quadrant broke a while ago. Um, I have been in touch with Thrustmaster who sent me instructions on how to um, 
on how to fix the motherboards and, and, and change some of the components, which I've been through, but unfortunately haven't worked. So I'm going to have to send my, my throttle quadrant off to them to get looked at. But um, unfortunately, I, I've not got around to getting that sent off to them. So I'm actually kind of using a, a, a couple of sticks. I'm using my X52 Pro and I'm using the, the stick off the, off the HOTAS Warthog. Now, in the controls, um, you can do everything using the keyboard if you want to. Um, and all of these controls are, are adjustable, so you can go in and, and, and put the controls where you want them or, or, or you know, where they'd be most useful for you. So what I want to take a quick look at is the controls which are the most important, or the ones that you're going to use the most. Now you've got things like the, the trigger um, for firing the gun, you've got the bomb release key or weapon release, uh, which again is fairly important. You've got the master mode control button. Now on the Warthog stick it, it's at the front um, and what this does it's on the M key on the keyboard as you can see there as well. It cycles between uh, the modes um, or for, for bomb release so the, the two modes that you have are CCIP and CCRP. CCIP is um, it's like a manual control release mode so when you press the button the bomb will drop. CCRP is computer controlled release point so you press and hold the button and then when the bomb oh sorry when the computer thinks the bomb is going to hit the target it will then release the bomb which is the most accurate way of dropping a bomb. Now when you have a look through these HOKATAS controls you've got things like boat switches, CMS, China, DMS, TMS, Pinky, SLUs. Now all that to you might not mean anything, you know, it's all nonsense. So let's explain some of this. Now, the most important thing uh, that you're going to need, uh, apart from the, the main buttons there, th this is hat wise. Now, hat, what I mean by a hat switch is a switch that has multiple um, or multiple directional travel. So um, most joysticks come with at least one hat switch, which you can use for normally things like trim. Now, because my throttle broke um, on the on the HOTAS throttle system, the SLU command is actually on um, on the throttle. Now, I've moved this across to um, the, the the trim switch on my on my HOTAS throttle. So when I, I SLU down, SLU left and right, uh, that's on there. Now, the other um, components that are, are most important, you've got the DMS or data management switch. You've got the TMS or target managing switch, and then you've got the Cooley switch, and I'll explain what all those do in a minute. Um, but those four hat switches are, are your most important. They're the ones that you're going to use the most. Now, if you have just a basic joystick, um, you don't need to panic. There's always certain things you can do. Now, what you can do is that you can have up to six um, kind of controls on one hat switch. Um, now how you, you do that is that you can actually uh, press things like uh, right shift, right control and right alt, or you can have left alt, left control and left shift along with a hat switch. So because I've moved the slew controls to my hat switch and um, it's removed the trim controls. So what I do is I press right control and then hat switch and then that's known my trim. So, you know, I've got two modes on one hat switch, which is something you can do as well. Now, other things you can do, you can plug in other controllers to, to take up the slack as well, if you don't have those buttons on your joystick. And one thing I'd recommend as well is an Xbox controller. So, you know, if, if you have an Xbox controller lying around, or they're, they're fairly cheap, you know, you can buy them online for next to nothing, you can plug that in and program in the controls into the hat switches, the D-pad, the, you know, the A, Y, B, X controls on, on the um, on the Xbox there. So, you know, you, you have those buttons free to do what you need to do. So let's look at what those buttons actually do inside the cockpit. So the China hat is what I'll talk about first. It, it moves between the screens and the HUD. So uh, China hat up makes the HUD the uh, sensor of interest or SOI. And you know it's SOI because you have a little asterisk in it. If you press it left short, 
<laughs> now this is something I'll get into as well every hat switch has two functions if you press it short or just press the, the, the key it does one function if you press and hold it it does another function and this is where the complexity comes into it's remembering what all of these do now you will forgive me tonight because I've been doing this for so long, a lot of this has become muscle memory, it's stuff that I generally do without thinking much about, and trying to explain what it does while I'm doing it, I'm, I'm going to get awfully confused, so if I start gibbering, then I do apologise, I'm trying my best, uh, but well, you know, I'm, I'm about to get things wrong. So, um, so by going China Hat short, it moves through the screens, if you press and hold it, then it makes something the centre of interest. So. As you can see, that says not SOI, which means sensor of interest. So if I go China hat left long, that disappears and you get a green ring around the screen. That's then made that the sensor of interest or the sense, you know. So that's when you move the, the slew hat controls or, or the DMS or data management switch around, then you'll control what's going on with that screen. And you can also use that for making things like the, the, um, the lantern pod or the TGP. Um, your uh, like um, sensor point of interest or SPI. Now, if you watch uh, part two of this, you'll understand um, now what I mean by all of the TLAs, and there's a lot of them. And now, my objective with these videos is is to make using this aircraft as simple as possible. That that's what I want to do. And when I'm I'm going through using these weapons, I'm I'm going to miss a lot of stuff. You know that there is a lot of stuff you can do with 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 these systems that I'm not going to go into simply because it is, it's, it's too complex to really explain in, in, in a short video, even though this video is going to be really long. Um, so what we'll do is that we'll start taxiing out here and then we'll, we'll start explaining kind of what's, um, what's going on uh, with the systems when we get airborne. So, also while I'm taxiing out, uh, the, there's several things I want to do here as well. Um, I'm going to turn on the TGP to get that warmed up. Um, now the TGP or targeting pod, it takes about, um, well it takes a couple of minutes to warm up, but as you can see on the TGP screen it says not timed out. Now at the moment if, if we, you know, we cannot activate that TGP, it's not ready to go. So you need to get that warmed up before you can do that. I'm also going to turn on the laser because we're going to be using that. Uh, but right now I'm going to be uh, leaving the, um, the gun arm and the master arm off and, until, we get, um, until we get airborne. So as you can see that the TGP there is, is, is going through its um, built-in test and it's starting up and do what it needs to do. So while that's doing that, we'll, we'll just go ahead here and, and we'll take off. So again, looking at the, the speed on the HUD as we went through in uh, part one and part two there, and this, oh sorry, in, in part two even, as soon as that gets to 50, switch off your nose wheel steering, and then just using fine rudder inputs, just keep uh, going down the runway. So again, that's 120, so I'll just start lightly pulling back on the stick. 130, and then 140, the nose should just pop up. 150, we're able. And then we'll bring up the gear. And then we'll shut that off. And then we'll bring up the flaps. And then while we're climbing out, we'll just retrim the aircraft in order to, uh, in order to keep us flying straight. Now as you can see the, the lightning pod there, I keep calling it lantern pod, I think that's a British thing isn't it, the lantern pod is, is what you get on tornadoes, uh, but the, the lightning pod is, is, is the TGP, so you, you'll forgive me for getting a couple of things wrong, <laughs> that's why I put the, the warning on the start of this video, because yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get things wrong, I know that. Now as we're flying out here, there's something else I need to do as well actually. When you go into DSMS, which is the data stores management page, this is the page that you use to, to control all of the weapons and do what you need to do. As I went over in, in part two, you need to turn on the electro optical systems for Mavericks before they fire. So I'll just turn those on now, ready for, um, ready for us uh, playing with the Mavericks. And the Mavericks do take about four minutes to warm up. So um, yeah, we'll switch that on there and then that'll get that underway. So we're, we're just climbing out here, we'll, we'll climb out to about um, 4,000 and then we'll, we'll start turning towards our, our training target area. And then we'll, we'll start going over using the, the TGP because that's now warmed up. 
Okay, so that's uh, approaching 4,000 now, so I'll just uh, arrest my rate of descent. Um, and then what we'll do is that we'll just select um, waypoint 2 and then we'll, we'll cut the corner and start heading that way. Again, just following the box that's on the hood there, and the line that's on the, the pit. So that's us now pointing towards our, uh, our waypoint 2. And then again, just uh, retrim up the aircraft so that she's going to fly fairly straight at the, at the throttle setting I've got, and then I'll just engage the autopilot, just to keep us uh, flying straight while we go for the functions of the TGP. Now, if I make the, the TGP the, the center of interest, it will do it. Um, in fact, on actually. Um, now the TGP has several modes as you can see here you've got AG, STB and AA. That's air to ground, standby or off and air to air. So what we're going to do is switch that into AG mode and then you get this screen coming up here uh, which is um, where the TGP is actually looking. So as you can see that the, the, the TGP has unfilled itself and now you can see the, the TV screens on there, which is um, where this is actually looking. Now, with the TGP as your center of interest, or SOI, if you move the slew switch around, it then moves the toggling pod around. And as you can see, you get a little diamond moving around on the hood, and that is where the TGP is looking. So, as you can see there, I'm just slewing around, and then you can have a look and, and see what's going on. So, there's a, a city kind of um, a million miles over in that direction where that pipper is. And the TGP, you can actually, using the, the boat switch forward short, zoom in, and then using the, the, the DMS, yeah, sorry, I think it was TMS, isn't it? it it's, um, I forget what goes in. You can actually zoom in. So, there we go. We're, we're zoomed in on someone's house. That is like uh, you know quite a distance away. It's, it's, it's well beyond visual range, but the the, the pod here has the, the power to um, to zoom in and, and look kind of that far away, which is absolutely amazing. Now, what I'm going to actually do here, as we're passing waypoint two, is um, in fact if we're going to the TGP and zoom out a bit. We'll make waypoint three our um, next waypoint. Now, what I'm going to do with uh, TMS up long is make uh, with the HUD as the center of interest. Now I, I really do apologize about this. I'm trying to make this as, as simple as possible. So with the HUD as the center of interest or SOI, if you press DMS up long, it makes that the sensor of interest or SPI. Then when you make the TGP or targeting pod your center of interest, if you press, I believe it's boat switch forward long, the, the targeting pod will then zoom towards your center of interest. So if we zoom out there, as you can see, it's now zoomed in on my waypoint 3, which is the targeting airfield, or, or the uh, my targets, which are kind of um, over there. So now, use the targeting pod, I can then slew around. It's my computer, computer freezes up, computer freezes up, up, fantastic. I can slew around and find the target. So there we go, if I just zoom in there, We've got, I believe, a MiG-23 parked on the panel, which um, which is absolutely fantastic. So there we go. I'll switch that to uh, laser. I've made, I've now made the TGP with DMS up, or sorry, TMS up long. I've now made the TGP my sensor point of interest. So wherever my TGP is now pointing is where the rest of my systems are going to point. So I'm just going to. Uh, uh, turn slightly here so that I'm not getting too far away from the targeting area. And then what we're going to do now is look at dropping um, dropping bombs or, or certain weapons. So the first thing I'm going to look at is actually the laser guided bombs. And then we'll, we'll while I'm, I'm flying on this course here, but we'll have a look at uh, getting those ready to drop. And then we'll, we'll go in and, and we'll drop a couple of them on target. So again, I'll, I'll just uh, engage my autopilot here, and then that should hopefully start taking care of the aircraft for me. Um, so let's go to the DMS, or DSMS, sorry. So your, your laser guided bombs here are the GBU-12s, which are uh, the aircraft. Um, they're the, the, the very long bombs uh, on the second from inner pilot. 
they're the LGBs. So what I'm going to do is select the LGBs. Um, I'm going to actually turn on my, my master arm and gun pack now as well to get these ready. So as you can see that comes up saying gun ready. I'm going to make sure I'm in CCRP mode because I, I need CCRP mode to drop the laser guided bombs. Um, and then what we need to do is actually program these bombs ready for release. Now the laser guided bombs uh, need a laser in order to hit their target. Now the laser, um, <coughs> you can fire it manually by pressing a button or you can get the computer to fire the manual. Uh, fire the laser automatically. <laughs> Again, I'm starting to get tongue-tied here. Tongue-tied? Tongue-tied. Fuck's sake. Right, so what we need to, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to program in the laser so it will fire automatically. So you, if you forget, you're still going to hit the target. So you go into profile, you change mode to CCRP. Um, oops. Yep, so profile. CCRP mode. Um, I'm going to go into change settings. Then up here you've got auto LS, which is auto laser. So um, what that means is that the, the computer will automatically fire the laser. But there's one more step. We need to tell the computer when to fire the laser. Now as a rule of thumb, I program in, using the keypad here, 10 seconds. So then when my track AR behaves itself, and my computer stops pausing, we go down here and it says LS time, which is laser time. I'll press that button there. So that then tells me that the auto laser is on, and then at 10 seconds from impact, uh, my laser will then uh, hit the target, or, or the laser will fire, and then the bomb will hit the target. So we'll go back to the DSMS now, and then we'll, we'll turn in on target, and then we'll uh, see if we can't. Uh, can hit it with something. So again, the, the, the target airfield's over there is quite a far, quite far away, but our, our targeting pod has absolutely no point, kind of, uh, no problem making out what's over there. So I'm in CCRP mode as well. I know that much. Um, I'm actually just going to drop one bomb, so I'll unselect that, and then I'll just make sure that yep, the auto laser's on, and we're set for for 10 seconds on that bomb, which is fantastic. Now. With the, the CCRP mode, you get two lines. You get, um, with the LGBs, you get this, which is your guidance line. This is what you need to fly towards in order to drop the bomb. And then this line here with the circle on the bottom is your aiming reticle. Now, the idea is to put that lit, the solid line uh, in the middle of the targeting reticle and then fly this route. So this is us now flying um, kind of down the, the, the bombing route uh, towards our, our intended target. Now on the, the route marker, or on, on, yeah, I'll, I'll call it that, the route line, uh, you've got a little um, circle at the top here. Now that's quite important. When we start getting within range of dropping the bomb, that will give us a countdown. Numbers will come up on that. And then that will give us a, a countdown to the bomb release. Now it comes up generally about 20, and then it'll give you a 20 second countdown. When it gets to about 5, I personally start pressing and holding the bomb release key. And then in CCRP mode, when the bomb's ready to release, it'll then drop off the pylon. And then, hopefully, guide towards target. And then we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. So as you can see, we're now 21 seconds from release. That's 20, that's 19, and you can also see that the... the uh, that's down there is, is the point of impact once we actually drop the bomb. So that's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So I'm pressing and holding the bomb release key now. Then when that circle gets through the reticle, the reticle will flash. You hear a clunk, and then in the DSMS that goes white, showing that the weapon's released. Now if we come over here to the TGP, in the bottom left-hand corner you've got the countdown to impact. At 10 seconds, the L starts flashing, which then means that the laser is firing, which is fantastic. And then when that gets down to zero, all being well, you see your bomb hit the target, and boom, that's a kill. So that's using the LGBs. So we'll go over that one more time. 
so that we, we uh, you know we, we know what we're doing there. so again I'll just check my profile here so again the auto lasers on at, at 10 seconds I'll find another target using the, the TGP with the slew mode so again I think we've got another uh, aircraft over here that's a, a fencer I believe it is um, make sure that's my point of interest well then fly away a little bit so that we can have a, a, a semi-decent run-up. I know I'm in CCRP mode, uh, so then we'll start turning around onto target. <coughs> so again we, we've got our laser guided bomb weapon there, we've got our profile set, we've got the target in our TGP which is set to our um, sensor point of interest, our SPI. <coughs> and then what we need to do is just line up the line so you've got your, your, your guidance line and then you've got your bomb reticle aiming point so again we'll, we'll line up those two points there and then we'll just fly down the, 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 the route towards target here and then when we start getting towards um, 20 seconds from uh, release point you get the, the numbers right at the top there on the dot so that's 15 seconds there, that's 10 seconds, so I'm going to start pressing and holding the weapon release key now. The small dot starts working its way down the pipe and then when it hits the target reticle it flashes. That shows that the bomb has been released. So then we can look through the TGP at the target, we're 13 seconds from impact, that's 10 seconds from impact now. The L starts flashing, which shows that the laser is firing. And then our bomb should be guiding towards target. I can make fine adjustments if I want to. And then boom, direct impact, bomb on target. And that's the laser guided bombs. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is the GPS guided bombs, or GBUs. Now these are much simpler to use than what the LGBs are, but uh, again there's certain things you, you must do in order for the weapon to release. So we'll go ahead and find ourselves a, another target in, in the TGP here. So I think I've got another aircraft over here, yes we do, so I'll just zoom in on that and we've got a MiG-29. So I'll just make, make sure that again is my um, sensor point of interest, or SPI. Make sure I'm in CCRP mode, which we are. <coughs> and then what we'll do is that we'll turn around here, and then we'll, we'll start flying in towards target. And then we'll talk about uh, releasing the, the GBUs, uh, which are, are satellite guided bombs. Now with the G G GBUs, you, you don't need to worry about lasers. You don't need to worry about laser profiling or firing or anything like that. So when you uh, make your TGP, your targeting point, your sensor point of interest, or SPI. Uh, that then programs GPS coordinates into the bombs. So as long as you release it within a certain envelope, or within a certain place, that bomb can guide itself to target. And the, the advantage of the GBUs over the LGBs is that they're generally fire and forget. You, you don't need to keep pointing the laser at the target. So again, we're, we're flying down towards a target here, but you don't have the, uh, the circle on the top of the guidance line. Instead, inside of the reticle you have two arrows. That's your maximum and minimum drop positions. So when this arrow gets to the 12 o'clock position, the inside line inside the target reticle will start coming down, which it's doing now, and then you get manual release on HUD. So at this point you press and hold the weapon's release key, and then all being well, your weapon will drop, which is just done there. And then we can look on the on the GBU here, again you get a, a countdown to impact, so we're at uh, 15 seconds now. So at this point you can be turning and burning, braking, kind of moving away from targets, kind of avoiding sounds and flaks and everything else that you need to do. So that's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and impact, boom, direct hit on the MiG-29 and that's a good kill. <coughs> so again we'll go through that one more time. Uh, just to, to reiterate it. Um, so what we'll do first is that we'll find a, a target using the TGP and I've got one aircraft left which is a um, Foxhound I believe it is. 
make it your sense of point of interest, you then line up on target, so we'll just take off autopilot here and then we'll, we'll start turning around. I hope you follow this, <laughs> following me through this. Um, unfortunately when it comes to TLAs they're unavoidable. They're, they really are at this point. I'm, I'm trying to make this a, as simple as I possibly can. Uh, but unfortunately this part of it is, is where all of the complexity really kind of comes into. So again we'll, we'll fly down our, 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 our target route which is the solid line. We're looking at the minimum and maximum arrows on the, on the uh, bomb release point there. Now when the, the top arrow gets to a 12 o'clock position, we're now at maximum um, range, you get manual release. And with the GBUs you must press and hold until the bomb is gone. If you press and release before the bomb actually goes off the rack, you'll get a hung store. And when you get a hung store, there's no way of get, getting rid of that bomb. You won't be able to drop it again. So again, looking at this, we're 10 seconds from impact now. Now we can just keep an eye on, on the TGP there. And then within any second now, you'll see the, the bomb fly into screen. And boom, that's a dead foxhound. So that's using the GBUs. And I, <laughs> I hope that you've, you're following me with this. I, I really, really do. Uh, again, you know, I'm trying to make this as, as straightforward as possible without kind of overloading, um, <coughs> overloading you with uh, TLAs and other stuff like this. But <laughs> it is unavoidable um, that going into to some of the, the, the phrases and terms and stuff with this. So what I'm going to do now is gain a little bit of distance, and then we'll have a look at using the Mavericks. Now again, we have two types of Mavericks here. We've got the Ds and the H, I believe, or H model, yes. Now the D model, um, I believe, is the infrared guided uh, Maverick, and then the, the white ones over there, the H model, is a daylight guided model. So what we're going to do now, using the, the TGP here, which is actually pointing directly backwards, so that's why it's not finding anything. <laughs> so if I actually kind of dip my wing down a bit here, we'll, we'll, we'll find the airfield again. In fact, what I might do is circle slightly here, just to, to let us get an, an unobstructed picture of the target area. Done. So down here there are some tanks. Now in daylight mode, which is what our TGPs on now, you can't really kind of see them. That they don't pop out. You, you can see there's there's trucks and APCs at the back there, but in amongst the grass here there, there's tanks. Now you can't really see them. So what we can do is that if we go boat switch forward short, um, zooms in. Oops, no. <sighs> what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Um, Ah, oh, there we go. Yes, it is, it's um, the rocker switch. You can move it between daylight, inf uh, infrared black hot, and infrared white hot. So, what I need to do now is just refine um, my waypoint 3. So, I'll make waypoint 3 my, my sense of point of interest again. I'll then go rocker switch back long, which then sends. Uh, locks up the, the TGP on my sensor point of interest, which I did by making the HUD the sensor of interest. Oh my god. I'll then go rocker switch forward short, which then brings up, in fact, I, I prefer, yeah, black hot or white. We'll go white hot. That, that makes things kind of pop out. And if we look over here, um, we do have a large selection of tanks. So as you can see, there's trucks, there's APCs, and over this side here I, I have rows and rows of tanks, which you couldn't see using daylight, but in infrared they stand out really, really nice. So again, I'm going to make my TGP the sensor point of interest again. I know, I'm, I'm trying my best here, I really, really am. And then what I'm going to do actually is, is change the TGP on this side to TGP. So I've now got my TGP on my left hand screen, as well as my right hand screen. Now what I'm going to do is select Mavericks. Um, now at the moment, this screen that you see here with sensors shows me that the EO is on. Um, 
loading my aircraft here, I didn't realise I've got my uh, autopilot back on. Now when we go in here and we select the Maverick, so I'm going to select the D model first, you'll get the, um, the crosshairs in the screen here, which shows that my Maverick is now um, locked up, or it's activated. The EO is on, which means that it's ready to fire. So we'll go back to the TGP, which is my um, sensor point of interest. If I then move over a tank and, and lock that up, we'll turn into target. I'm now going to make my Maverick my sent. Okay, so a little a little skip there, sorry, but I was just resetting my recording because after a, a long pause like that, it's generally not going to work. So I'm going to start flying towards target here. I've got a target inside my TGP. Then using Mavericks, I'm then going to press the, the boat switch back short. Oops, sorry, uh, back long even. Which is then going to center up my Mavericks, or at least it should do. Why is it not doing it? Uh, forward long, sorry. I keep thinking it was backwards there. Oops, my TGP's actually fallen off target here, so we'll... Ah, yes. I've done. No, 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 no. There we go. So, yep. Let's make that my point of interest. We'll come back to that. Go forward long. Now, my Maverick is now pointing at attack, but it's not locked up. What I need to do is press DMS, or sorry, TMS up short to lock it up, and you can tell it's locked up because the, the line goes right close in on the target. Then if I press and hold the weapon release key, we fire a Maverick. And then if we look at the TGP, <laughs> don't worry, I'll do this again. Um, we should then soon see the Maverick impact on target, and boom, there we go. So that's a, a good impact by a Maverick. So, yeah, let's go out and then we'll, we'll do that again, um, and then we'll, we'll hopefully do it a bit better this time. So what we'll do, um, as we're flying away here slightly, um, in fact, because I, I've got the... Okay. Uh, right, so that was a big pause, so just two seconds. Blocked out the TGP, so we can't find the target yet, but what we'll do is that we'll, um, we'll circle around again to the, the right here. Just trimming out the aircraft, because once you fire off a weapon, it becomes asymmetrical and it just wants to keep rolling on you. <clears throat> so we'll gain a little bit of distance here again, and then we'll go through that a bit slower. And, um, so that you guys can see kind of what's going on there. So that's our target airfield over there. I'll make my um, TGP my sensor of, of interest. I'll find myself a tank. I'll make that my point of interest. Now, what I can do at this point as well, if I go back to my Mavericks, oops, if I press the right key, if I go boat switch forward long, that then points the Maverick, or, or tells the Maverick that it needs to look at where my uh, TGP is pointing, but the, the Maverick only has a very to very limited Seeker gimbal, so as you can see there it says gimbal limits. But the good news is that when I turn back into target, that will then um, find it, uh, so that um, we can have a, a bit more time to, uh, to kind of lock it up and do what we need to do. So we'll roll in on target now. And then as we come around here, the, the Maverick's uh, Seeker should line up with where the TGP is pointing. So coming around nice and slowly. I don't want to throw the aircraft around at this point because it can throw both the TGP and the Maverick off. So again, I'm just going to realign the, 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 the Maverick here. I can zoom in and as you can see it's pointing at the tank that the TGP is pointing at, but I'm not. So I'll just uh, come back left here. Then when you're in range, as you can see, we're actually in range now. This arrow is inside this box, which means that we're in range. So I'll go TMS forward short, which locks it up. And again, the arrow then circles in around the tank. We then press the, the weapon release key. And that's the Maverick now flying towards target. So again, we'll, we'll just turn off target here, but the TGP is still pointing there. And then within three, two, one, impact. So that was a good kill, another good kill by the Maverick there. 
Now I'm going to show you a, a certain tip that I use. Um, in fact, what on, I've only got uh, one Maverick ball left on that side, so I'm going to switch across to the daylight version of Mavericks, and then we'll go back to the, the TGP. Now, you can initially find your, your targets using the TGP, but you can search using the, the Seeker heads on the Maverick as well. So if we um, find ourselves at another group of tanks, so we all know that these tanks are bad guys, you know, we, we, we've seen them there on our TGP. Um, I don't need to find every tank using the TGP in order to uh, lock them up with, um, with the Mavericks. So I've locked in, in the Mavericks Gimbal Seeker head there now, so that when I turn on targets the Mavericks will, will find that cluster of tanks. But then what I can do is that I can move the, the Seeker head around once that's the center of interest. So if I zoom in there, I can see the, the group of tanks there. So I've got plenty of range here once I've actually kind of started pointing at target, if I start paying attention. So so I can go TMS up short when we're in range, or once the seeker head can find it, so there I'll go, it's found it, so I'll fire. I can then find another target, check it, lock it up, fire, and then do the same again. So lock it up and then fire. So that's three Mavericks on one run. And then if we zoom out on the on the TGP here, we should see three tanks three tanks erupt in a lovely ball of flame and that's just um, kind of unselective um, picking using the, the Maverick's own sea cards rather than going um, using the, the, the TGP to select every target. So there we go, that's uh, three Mavericks launched in one pass and three, three tanks killed. And then I've got one, one Maverick left there so I can go around and, and you know, if I suggest that, hey, you know, you know, I, I can look and go, hey, that, that guy survived. And then you, you can, um, oops, if I actually select that Maverick again on, on the TMS, make that the sensor of interest, tell it to lock the gimbal up, turn around back onto target. <laughs> now, with this, I guess, the, the best tip I can give is just have a, a routine of doing things, you know, so, yeah, you know, when, when you're going things, have a, a, a certain method of, of doing things, which will make life so much easier. So w once you've done this a few times, it, it all kind of becomes almost like second nature, like muscle memory, I suppose. So, you know, you, your fingers will learn the controls o over time, and then you know, this becomes much less of a hassle. Uh, again, it's like everything in life, it's practice, and the more you do something, the easier it becomes. So again, that, that's all of our, our bombs and all of our, our Mavericks off there. And that's a lot of targets killed. So what we're going to actually have a look at now is the GAU-8, or G-A-U-8, which is the... Um, which is the big cannon on the nose of this aircraft. So I've got my tactical awareness display back up, and then I've got my TGP back on the um, on the right-hand screen there, so we can find some targets. Now I do have a, a whole selection of um, hard and soft targets down there, so tanks, APCs, trucks, things like this. So what I'm going to do is um, line up, and then we'll, we'll start prosecuting targets through the TGP. So again, I uh, can zoom over this way. In fact, I know that that's a truck park over there, so if we zoom all the way in we can see that, yep, we've got trucks, so I'm going to make that my sensor point of interest, so that I know where I need to fly to. I'm going to trim my aircraft out, and then what we'll do is that we'll line up on target, and then we'll, we'll do a gun run. Now, this whole time I've been in CCRP mode, um, using the master mode switch, I need to select guns, which then brings up the gun aiming reticle, which is down there, and that shows our, our impact points for our weapons. So using the, the TGP or visual, if, if you've got good situational awareness, you can kind of figure out where you are, see where your targets are, and also using the TGP, if you've got like a row of trucks, as we do here, you can select, right, I'm going to hit that outside row of trucks. So I'll zoom in on, on them. And 
and then we'll, we'll start going in for a gun pass. Now, the gun, um, let's talk a little bit about this. So as you can see, this is the gun arm switch down here. Now, I'm in gun pack arm. You've got two modes there. You've got gun arm and gun pack. Now, in gun pack, um, the autopilot uh, kind of kicks in when you hold the first stage on the trigger. So it's a two-stage trigger. When you hold it to the first point, as you can see there, you get pack one come up on the hood, which means that the controls are neutralized slightly. And then when you fire the, the trigger, the computer kind of flies the aircraft slightly in order to counter the recoil. If you fire the gun without the pack on, then the, <laughs> the nose of the aircraft will, will be wrenched upwards through the recoil coming off the cannon. So it's always a good idea to, to stabilize using the pack and then fire the cannon. So I'm lining up down the, the length of trucks here at the moment. So we'll just focus solely on the HUD here for a moment uh, at the moment. So I'm just going to power down because we're slightly diving here. Um, the pip is there showing me where I'm aiming. I put the gun point over and I can start holding the pack. And as you can see, the line's working its way down the HUD. And then if I give it some scores, then we make a mess of a lot of trucks. And we'll just break it. If we zoom out. I think I've got a few trucks there. At least I hope I've got a few trucks. It'd be kind of embarrassing if I didn't. <coughs> so we'll just uh, come to where the TGP's going. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them on fire down there. So there we go. Uh, we missed the first one, <laughs> but we got every other one in the row. So that's not not terrible. So again, we'll uh, we'll just come around and we'll do that again. But I want to want you to have a look at something else. Um, where the gun aiming reticle is, when you start coming in range, you, you get a, a countdown line. The inside starts going down, which then shots uh, starts sh showing you that you that you're inside range for firing the gun. When the rounds impact, you actually start seeing flashes of uh, dots on the HUD showing you where your rounds are impacting. So you can actually fire off a, a short squirt, adjust your, your aiming point, and then start firing off again. Um, and also, I believe that there is a way using the, the DSMS to, to select your, your, your round length so you can fire long bursts, short bursts, all of the other good stuff that I might, might want to do. So again, just uh, lining up a truck. We'll line up on that row of trucks, and then we'll go in and we'll do another gun pass. So again, we've got the, the pipper there, showing us where our target is. We line up our aiming reticle. Just put that on target, hold down the gun pack, which will stabilize the aircraft and keep us pointing towards our target. The mark is then coming down, so we can give it a short squirt. And as you'll see, you start seeing flashes on the HUD there. There they are, showing the impact points of the rounds that we fired. And I do believe that we killed every truck on that pass with a very, very short squirt. So that was pretty effective. And that's the, the, the uh, GAU-8, or, or the, the cannon on the A-10C which is an incredibly potent weapon. It's good against soft targets, it's also very good against things like APCs. Um, you can use it against tanks like the T-80 or T-72s and things like that, but you need to get quite a few rounds on target before the, the damn thing will actually blow up. And then the last thing that we've actually got there, which I forgot to mention before, is the rockets. So if we go back into the DSMS, I'll show you something that's quite cool as well. So if we if we arm our rockets, you get a reticle the same as what you do when you're using the gun, the gun aiming reticle. But you also get a, a second reticle there as well, which is the cross. So the circle, the, the big reticle, is our rocket impact point. So that shows where our rockets are going to impact on target. The cross that's next to it is the impact point for our guns. So when you're flying in towards a target, as we are now, when the aiming reticle starts working its way down, there, 
we can start firing off our rockets at the targets ahead of us. And then we'll see if any of those hit at all. Then you can put the cross on target and then start firing pull off up, the gun pull up. in order to kill a few more. Altitude, targets. altitude. So rockets aren't the most accurate things. You know, they're, they're good for kind of high altitude um, steep dives in on targets in order to actually kind of make them more accurate. Um, but for shallow approaches like that from distance it's more of an area effect type weapon than kind of picking off any type of particular um, particular target. And that is using the weapon systems on the A10C. Now, like I said, I've only really kind of scratched the surface here with what you can do with these weapons. There's so much more that I could go into, but to be honest, it, it, it just starts getting overly complex, and, and trying to explain it becomes a bit of a nightmare, to be honest, you know. And, and like I said, you know, I, I know what I'm doing, but trying to explain what I'm doing is, a, is an entirely different thing. So what we'll do here is that we'll just fly back to uh, to the airfield and we'll, we'll land. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I, I hope, I, I really do hope, you know, that, that you learn something like that, you pick up something from this, you know. Even if, even if you know, you, you've been flying the A-10 for a while, you know, if, if you watch this and actually manage to pick something up, then that's my objective, you know, that that's, that's what I want, you know. That, that's why I'm doing these videos, you know, I'm trying to share my own knowledge, you know, what I've learned from flying these sims for, for, for several years. So that I, I can make your life in DCS easier. You know, and also if, if you've never flown DCS before and you look at it and you think, I'm, I'm not too sure, you know, I don't think I can do that. You know, I want these videos to, to be kind of like a, a first step so you can watch this and go, right, okay, I have kind of an understanding about what I need to do now or what I can do. And then you can go put that into practice on, on you know, kind of solo player missions like this where you can go online. And the online community is actually really quite good. Um, you know, there's lots of guys there that will take time to help you. There's dedicated squadrons and things like this, which will take the time to um, kind of talk you through whatever you need to do. So, yeah, you know, if you've never played DCS before, by all means, give it a go, you know, you're not losing out on anything at all, and, you know, if, if you do play DCS regularly, then, hey, you know, I hope you learned something, I hope that you're picking something up from this. So I'm just turning on that ILS here. I've got it, so why not use it? So again, just flying in here, and then we'll uh, we'll come in for a nice landing. Sorry, just going through lots of things here. So what was Batumi? I believe Batumi is um, one three zero. Is not the right way. So I'll just change that to one three zero. That should be the runway uh, coming up there, as it is fantastic. So now I'm actually climbing here while I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing, which is super. And then we'll start slowing down here and, and bring our brakes out. Now again, I always land with my brakes all the way out, um, simply because it gives you more control in slowing the aircraft down. So <laughs> that's another thing as well. If, if you press TMS down, uh, not uh, not TMS, uh, Cooley down, it swaps your screens over. So if you want to do that quickly, you can. And then what we'll do is that we'll just line up on runway here. So we've got our undercarriage down, we've got three green lights, we've got our flaps down, we've got our brakes out. And then we'll just uh, line up for, for landing and hope everything kind of goes well. That's set to ILS, and I kind of hope the ILS will work this time when we get close enough. 
and still a little bit high I think if we actually look here I've got uh, um, all white lights which means that we're high so if they start going red then that means that we're low and then if you have half white and half red then that means that you're actually on glide slope so that's how that works I'm just going to retrim up here because I'm actually leaning back on the stick quite heavily trying to keep the nose up there we go so we've got one red light there and, and two white I know YouTube's compression probably is destroying this, but um, trust me, that's what's there. <clears throat> and then we'll start our approach. Ah, and there's our, um, our actual height indicator. Now, for some reason, um, the, um, the directional indicator never really seems to kind of point forward on this. It always points well off to the right. I think that's because the, the ILS van is off to the right hand side of the runway so it kind of um, it doesn't point you straight ahead so I mean it's good computer frozen again which is absolutely awesome I love it when it does that so again we're on on, on glide path here uh, which is all good in fact I am slightly to the right of, of the runway so I need to come left here so maybe the ILS isn't lying <laughs> Uh, there we go. So that's us now um, kind of back lined up on the salt line. But altitude, again, altitude. So I just need to descend slightly. Reduce speed slightly. There we go. So that's us now on glide path, if not slightly high. And again, just uh, with the brakes out, you need a little bit more power, but. When you cut back on the power, you, you slow down faster and, you know, you get a bit more responsiveness and a bit more control, which is all good in the hood. So again, just coming in here for a nice gentle landing, hopefully. And then just cut back on the power. Throttle up and wish that my computer would stop bloody freezing on me. Now I'll just keep the stick back just a little bit to help this arrow brake coming down the runway here. And then as we start slowing down, the nose will drop bring our air brakes back in and then just start rolling down towards the end of the runway here and just tapping wheel brakes re-engage the nose wheel steering Just tapping it, don't want to overheat the brakes, not that it's simulated, but um, you know, it's good practice. And then we'll just turn off the runway here. And lots of slowdown from my computer, which is awesome. Just taxi up in here and back to our parking spot. Right, and that's us now down safe. So, again, I, I really do hope that you've learned something from this, and and I will put up a, another video uh, looking at um, other things that I've not covered in in the last three. Um, and yeah, you know, like, like I, I keep saying, I hope that you take something away from this. And if there's anything that you'd like me to do, oops, <laughs> master cautioner for something. If there's something that you'd like me to do, something that you'd like me to cover, then by all means let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, I have had um, a, a few requests, which is something I'm going to be looking into soon. Um, I've just got myself the, the C101. Uh, a new training aircraft so I'll be putting up the video featuring that soon as well um, and the MiG-15 comes out on Friday which is tomorrow so hooray well not tomorrow even well yeah it'll be tomorrow after I've uploaded this is because it's Thursday now I'll get this uploaded uh, well it's Wednesday now it'll be Thursday by the time I get this uploaded and it'll be out on Friday so I'll be doing a, a first flight video then of, uh, featuring the MiG-15 hopefully so look out for that and yeah this is much saying thank Thank you very much and we'll see you next time.